Hi, it's Graham Johnson. I'm back and I just did a video to show you how to customize part of your auto pack scene for the HIV contest. And this is again to see if people can duplicate this using 3D Studio Max or Maya so that we can automate as much of those processes as possible because it's really easy to do in Cinema 4D currently and the developers were not that familiar with the other two systems so we want to see how you might go about that. So I'm in this time I'm going to repeat uh, some of the uh, replacing instances but I'm just going to do a much more interesting version where I'll, I'll put in some uh, an, a light with an effect on it and just a very basic animation in Cinema 4D to replace one of the spike proteins. So let's review and we'll begin by loading HIV into our scene and again in Cinema 4D actually you won't have to do this in the current version you'll have downloaded but I'm working with an older version here so let's get to our basic scene and what we want to do again is just replace these uh, spike proteins with our own unique variations of them so let's review the basic concept which is in Cinema 4D we have a root object that is instanced many times and those root objects are in this null called autofill hider. If I turn off all the instances and turn on the hider you can see that the uh, spike protein is sitting at the base, uh, sitting at the origin there. And again if we replace <coughs> if we replace that or augment it with any object. So I know from the previous video that we're looking with at ISUTM for the spike protein. If I drop this cube in, for example, we can see a repetition of the cube in every part of the scene here. Everywhere there's a spike protein, there's now a cube. And we can modify that cube, the original base cube and it gets repeated across all the spikes. Alright, so let's use that to do something a bit more fun. Uh, I previously showed you how to replace a part of the molecule with a custom molecule using EPMV. I'm going to repeat that just in the scene here uh, just so we can get up to speed with it. And so I'll start an EPMV session. Again, if you're in Maya, you could do this with molecular Maya, but in EPMV the steps are to turn off center molecule, okay, and I specifically want to replace just the stock 2x7r, 2x7r with the OPM version, and I will turn off the ribbon part of that model and turn on only the molecular surface. And you're not seeing much going on right now because I have not dropped it into the instance itself. But if we take, actually let's do one more thing, which is just color it by window from N to C. Okay. I'm going to drop that into our instance and again set it to minus 90 for the bank. And we can turn off the original GP41 portion of the protein. And we see these red stripes. And again, if I render, I uh, still have this bug to deal with. Apologies for that. Let's just chase that down so we don't have to deal with it. Your scene won't have this problem. Again, I'm dealing with an older patch of software here, so I just need to replace the path. Replace the path. And now when we render, we'll see a little rainbow colored replacement GP41s on every single instance. Now let's replace, instead of just replacing with a cube or the boring shape that we did last time, let's replace that model with something far more interesting. 
So again, I'm going to go to another scene here, an empty scene, just to make this a little bit easier to see what's going on. And what we just did already was we replaced this blue stock here with color by an end to see rainbow variation version of the molecular surface. Now let's put something more interesting at the top. So first an easy obvious thing to do is to drop a light into the scene. And actually I'm going to do that back in the original scene just to show you how easy this is. So if we hide all these objects and we only show our spike protein zoom in on it and let's go to a four panel view here so we can add just a light and I want that light to be centered so it's going to replace this geometry and let's turn off that visible geometry and I want this light to be a visible light and we'll set its fall off to go from 0 just to 100. And let's make it green just so it stands out a little bit more. And I need to be sure I don't want it to light the scene. I just want to be able to see it. Okay, so if we turn our entire HIV back on, and now we render, we should have our little rainbow colored stalks with a bright green spike. But again, not too exciting. Let's go back and do something more interesting. So I'm going to copy that entire spike protein base object, go into a new scene, and let's open up, I'm in uh, Cinema 4D version 13 here. Let's open up the content browser and under presets for the studio version character we'll grab something fun, a mouse. That might be a bit too much geometry. Let's grab this little C-motion animated guy. And I played with this earlier so we don't want any of these lights. They're going to complicate things. And let's turn off the visibility of his little light. That's complicated. And let's stop this motion. Nice little walk cycle. And I just want to center this guy. So let's grab all of his elements, carry him back to our empty spike protein scene. And I'm going to put him into a null. I'll make sure that null is centered where I expect it. And let's make an instance of that null. And let's position and scale that instance to make a very spiky spike protein, or maybe. If we push play, you can see that that's not animating. So in Cinema 4D, I have to render this instance. Okay, we've got him animating nicely. And let's do something here. Let's just increase the size of that. Normally recommend working haphazardly like this, but it's good enough to get us where we need to go. Okay, so we got very spiky spike protein, and we'll drop this entire system into IS, uh, not the entire system, just the null instance into the ISUTM, but we will copy this entire system back into our original scene here, and we'll just drag and drop it 
into here and place all of the contents of the CTM that's being instanced with our new fancy one. And if all has worked well, when we push play, we get our animated spike proteins. So let's try to zoom in on one and we'll see if we have a little bit less geometry in the scene. If we can see that in real time with my laptop here. Push play. Nice. Very gruesome spike. So when you animate that uh, or slow it down, you get a very cool effect. We can turn that. Oh, I deleted our glowing light. You can easily turn that back on. So we've got animated instances replacing a simple portion of the default geometry for the model. If we want to make an editorial uh, commentary about the spike proteins of this particular virus particle, that's one way of doing it. Please do your best to repeat this in 3D Studio Max and or Maya, and either send me a screen capture of the process or a written description of how you were able to pull it off, and we'll be sure to implement as much of that as possible into the program itself. Thanks very much.